Hello everyone, this is Eddie the Magic Monk. Welcome to another complex numbers tutorial. In this lesson, we're going to talk about how to prove the De Moivre's theorem. So I'm assuming that you guys know what this theorem is if you are looking up the proof of it. But basically, the theorem is that if there are two complex numbers, uh, two complex numbers z1 and z2, where the magnitude is denoted by r1 and r2, and the argument is denoted by theta1 and theta2, then z1 times z2 is equal to r1 times r2 cis. Uh, bracket theta 1 plus theta 2 okay I'll even uh, show you an example of this in GeoGebra so you know what I'm talking about so I'm just gonna draw two complex numbers in GeoGebra let's draw the first one as 2 plus 3i so that's my first complex number and then let's draw another complex number call it 1 plus 2i okay I'm just gonna drag the dots around a little bit and I'm going to have a point at the origin so that I can get the magnitude of both of these complex numbers by drawing a line between the points Okay, so you can see the magnitude of the magnitude of Z1 is B and the magnitude of Z2 is A. Okay, uh, let's make it a bit different. Okay, so now if I create another complex number by going Z1 times Z2 Okay, which is what the De Moivre's theorem is saying when we got two complex numbers Z1 times Z2 then the magnitude becomes the product of our original magnitudes so the magnitude of Z3 should be 2.97 times 3.36 which should be if I find where Z3 is first so if I draw a line from Z3 back to 0, I got the magnitude is 10, which is about the same as 2.97 times 3.36. Now notice that this will work no matter how you rearrange Z1 or Z2. Z3 is always going to be, the magnitude of Z3 is going, always going to be the magnitude of Z1 times the magnitude of Z2. So right now we have Z1, the magnitude is 2, Z2, the magnitude is 4.11, and 2 times 4.11 is 8.74. And now we're going to look at the argument. Okay, the rule says that the argument of the result is equal to the sum of the two arguments. So let's have a look at the argument of Z1. So the argument of Z1 is 34.37 degrees. The argument of Z2 is 112.29 degrees. So Z3, the argument, should be 34.37 plus 112.29. And you can see here the argument of Z3 is 146.66, which is which come from 112.29 plus 34.37 okay so this rule definitely does work now let's talk about how to prove it right because somebody must have come up with this rule somehow rather than uh, guessing it so the first thing we're going to do is rewrite Z1 back into its original form so where does the symbol cis come from well it comes from r1 times cos theta plus 
plus r1 times sine theta i right and all of this is all of this is abbreviated into r1 cis theta 1 so I'm factorizing that to make it R1 at the front of the bracket brackets cos theta 1 plus sine theta 1 and I'm putting the I at the front of sine theta 1 because in algebra you can reverse the order it still means the same thing Okay, so now I'm going to do the same thing with Z2. So Z2 is uh, R2 bracket cos theta 2 plus I sine theta 2. Okay, if you have no idea how R2 cis theta 2 is equal to this then you probably have to look at some of my other complex number tutorials okay now we're going to multiply them together just using normal expansion so z1 z2 is equal to and now we're just going to multiply these two quantities together so that gives us r1 cos theta 1 plus i sine theta 1 times r2 cos theta 2 plus i sine theta 2 and then as you guys know with multiplying you can change the order around it still gives you the same result so I'm gonna bring r1 and r2 to the front and then that's gonna be multiplied by cos theta 1 plus i sine theta 1 which is going to be multiplied by cos theta 2 plus i sine theta 2 and you can see here we have two brackets multiplying each other so we're going to have to use binomial expansions so on multiplying each term by each term in the other bracket so then I will get R1 R2 bracket so I'm gonna go cos theta 1 times cos theta 2 plus cos theta 1 times sine theta 2 with an i at the front okay then I'm gonna keep going plus i sine theta 2 sorry theta 1 times cos theta 2 and then the last one I have i sine theta 1 sorry i squared sine theta 1 sine theta 2 right all of this is in a big bracket right why is i squared because I have an i here and I also have an i here okay so let's now try and simplify this huge line so I'm going to factorize the i out so then I have I'm gonna copy this section down first so I have cos theta 1 cos theta 2 plus I'm gonna copy this section down except I squared is the same as minus so I'm going to make it minus sine theta 1 sine theta 2 so this part is done right and this part is done so what do I have left I have plus these two terms which I'm gonna copy down but I'm gonna factorize it and write I at the front of the bracket I um, and then I'm gonna put down 
cos theta 1 sine theta 2 plus sine theta 1 cos theta 2 and I'm going to finish the bracket and then I have one other bracket at the front which I have to close so that is the factorized version okay so now what do we have to do well if you guys remember the trigonometric identities uh, which I have just proven to you a couple of videos ago if you don't know where they are just search for trick identity proofs but basically one of the trick identities that we have proven previously is that we have proven that cos a plus b is equal to cos a cos b minus sine a sine b and you will notice that this section is very similar to this section okay so we're going to use that to simplify that section actually let me highlight it with that blue and then another section that is very similar to a trig identity that we've proven earlier is sine a plus b is equal to cos a sine b plus sine a cos b and you will see that this section is very similar to this section cos a sine b plus sine a cos b very similar to this so what does that mean well we can simplify it so then all of this gives us equals r1 r2 bracket cos bracket a plus b in this case is just theta 1 plus theta 2 and then we got plus i bracket and then again we're using the trig identity to simplify all this into sine bracket theta 1 plus theta 2 okay so now we've simplified it to this and you will notice that this section here this section here where we have cos bracket plus i sine bracket we can now simplify it using the cis notation as we did earlier so cos theta plus sine theta which turns into this which turns into the cis notation so we can now rewrite it as r1 r2 cis bracket theta 1 plus theta 2 okay so once we have proven that right z1 times z2 is r1 r2 cis uh, theta 1 plus theta 2 so now we have proven that to you you can use it to derive all the other rules which are part of the De Moivre's theorem okay thanks for watching guys see you next time